Hi students, how are you today? Sir? How are you? Sir, I'm fine, how are you? Tired. Tired, my dear, tired.
Это о, B plus. Good evening, students. Again, I'm just going to the others who were coming in. I'm another four minutes. I know you're just coming from a class. Um, so we can just grab a cup of water, a cup of juice, or something. Um, relax a little bit, and we'll start in another four minutes.
matter of fact, you know what I want you to do for me in the meantime? Um, so yesterday we looked at a question where we approximated it using the trapezoidal rule and we got negative 5.5 as our answer. What I want you to do for me at the start of the class is to integrate the function normally for me. Go ahead and integrate that definite function normally for me. Sir? Yes? Sir, sorry to put you, but your screen is blurry. So I'm not seeing the motivation. No, don't, 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 don't worry about that. Um, don't worry about that. Um, what I want you to do is the, the question that we worked yesterday, you have the question that we worked yesterday. I want you to do the actual calculation for me, the actual calculation. So we're gonna compare and see which is, which, is, which is more accurate. Was the approximation off? Was it exact? Because your actual calculation will tell us exactly what it is. So go ahead and do the actual calculation for me, please. Um, and let us see what can happen. Um, so this is what I'm asking to do. The actual calculation. The integral of x squared minus 3, upper limit 2, lower limit negative 1. I want you to do that actual calculation for me. Um, I give you a couple of minutes to get that done up, please and thanks. So, there is there any way I can there, something I share can look blurry. And again, do not, do not worry yourself about what is being shared. You have a question from yesterday. I've given an instruction, do the actual calculation. This is easily resolved. Do the actual calculation for me, please, and thanks. We'll sort this out afterwards. So we said that's two and negative one.
All right, so I would have given you enough time. All right, very good courage. Um, I like that answer. Very nice. Very nice. Um, I like that answer. I hear people asking, sir, is that a toe up there? Did I not say that is the same question we're working from last night? You know what the function is from last night? Can somebody give me the okay. All right. Um, Raji. No. All right. Um, so, can you give the function for me, please? Um, x squared minus three um, to the integral to um, negative one. Right, good, thanks. So remember, when we're integrating, we're adding one to the power and dividing by the new power. So that becomes x cubed over three minus three x. So this becomes two cube over three minus three times two minus one cube over three and a three times. Negative one. Yeah. Yes, yes it is. Thank you. Hmm? Somebody eat lunch today. Fine. So two thirds, two raised to the third power will be eight. So this is eight over three. And minus three times two is minus six. That's six over one. And this is gonna be negative one cube is negative one over three. And negative three times negative one is gonna be positive three. My LCM here is gonna be three. Three into itself goes one time, and one times eight is eight. One into three goes three times, and three times six would be 18. Yes, same here is three. Three into three goes one. One times negative one is negative one. One into three goes three times, and three times three would be nine. And eight minus 18 is gonna be negative 10. So this is negative 10 over three minus, uh, minus eight over three. The denominators are the same. So I'm gonna work the numerator and put back the denominator. Negative 10 minus eight is gonna be negative 18. And that is going to be equal to negative six units square. And that is going to be my answer. My answer is going to be equal to six units square. Now, let us compare our answer from last night. What did we get last night for our answer? Sorry, negative 11 over two. It is? As negative 11 over two. Yeah, it would be negative 5.5. 5.7. Right, 5.5. 5.5. Right, so negative 5.5 is the approximate answer. 
and 11 and, and, and negative 6. It's the it's actual answer. It's the actual answer. Um, so, um, if you got a question like that, will they, will they ask us both to, 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 bring, to bring both answers? All right. I will, I, will, I will have you answer that question for the next question I'm going to do. The answer, is yes. the answer is yes, but I'm going to, I'm going to show you more in the, in the other question. Yes, please. Oh, okay. Any questions related to this? No. Any other, any, any, anybody else? No, Look sir. Yeah. Well, okay. sir, you know, sir. Well, <laughs> well honestly, sir. The cross multiplier, right? Sir, right? No, sir. Oh, you get the 18, the 8 minus the 18. This one. Yeah, subtract. Wait, wait, which part do you talk? Well, yeah. The LCM, yeah. What's the LCM between three and one? It's going to be three, this three. Three into three goes one time. One times this eight is this eight. Oh, so I said eight. Okay. One into three goes three times, and three times negative six is negative yeah, eight. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's up there. All right, sir. Any questions? All right, and night, night tonight, I'm not going to go through my participants and call people. You know who I'm not seeing for this quite, quite a while? It's Tariq Ochoa. <laughs> Where is he? What happened to him? I know that is a bit. I don't know. I talked to him last week. Jesus. I probably have to talk to him and talk to him. I'm not, yeah, sure. I'm, not, I'm not seeing him. Just like when I was in Mikey the whole of last week, I just don't see him. No man, yes, to talk I to spoke him. to him yesterday. He said he was going to attend class today, but I haven't seen him. Oh, no. Oh, but, but he's okay, right? Yes, sir. He said he's catching up with class. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thanks much for the update. Yeah, but tonight is not a night where I'm going to be going to my participants this and say, um, courage, you're understanding, lot of you under. Nope, you guys are big people. I'm teaching. And when I, when I ask my question, do you understand? If I hear one person say yes, I'm moving. So there's not one person in the class. Well, if you not understand, say something. I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm moving. I need to make up a lost time. All right, let's go. So, yes. I would have gotten <clears throat> negative six unit squared for my answer. All right. Um, excuse me, sir. He said he's picking up on class and he's okay. Oh, so all right. Yes, the same thing I said to sir. Oh, oh all right. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, calculus two is not a course to play with you here. But anyhow, thank you. Thank you a lot. I appreciate it. All right, so let's go. So, um, so you can't see that? No, I cannot. No, don't worry about it. It looks, it looks blurry. Yeah, don't worry about it. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you understand when I say, leave it alone, don't worry, that's trivial. Yeah, because, you know, things that we don't need to complain about, we don't have to complain about. All right, let's go. So this is a past paper question. The topic finish, you know? The topic finish. So it says, the sketch below represents the error under the curve y equals x squared plus 2 between x equals x 1 equal and, and x, x equals equal 4. four. Of the boundaries of a plot of land purchased by ABC Company. The length of the particular offset at equal intervals from the straight line to the curve boundary are shown in the sketch. Now,
Can you see my cursor? Yes. Sir. Okay. Oh. All right. So I don't know what these things are, but hold on. It did say from x equals one to x equals four. Talk truth. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, so sir. Is, so this is x equal one right here, so. And x equal four right here, so. Oh, but it looked like we're going up into intervals of, of a half. Don't. Mm. Yes, sir. That means the that means the width of the of the trap tra the trapezium is going to be a half because one plus a half is one and a half plus another half is two plus another half is two and a half. Everybody remember what, how we, how we got the the width of the trapezium? B minus a over two over n the number of trapezoids. Yes, yes sir. sir. Good. And then it is saying 2.5, I'm going to add a half to that. We get three, add a half. Okay, sir, but I'm seeing what is happening here. But sir, what are these numbers here? How many trapezoids do we have here? Much trapezoid. Six, sir. One, two, six. three, four, six. five, six, six. How many ordinals five, then? Five, oh, seven, it's sir. Five, seven. seven, sir. Seven, sir. Yeah, somebody said five. Five, five of who? The trapezoid, sir. No. One, One two, three, four, five, six. six. One between 1.5, 1 between 2, 1 between 2.5, 1 between 3, 3.5, 3 and 4. Very good. And then now the, the ordinals will be 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Remember that from last night? Yes, sir. Yeah, man, the number of trapezoids will be one greater than the yeah. number. Of, right, yeah. So we have yeah. six trapezoids. That means we have seven. But I don't know what is this three and 4.25 and six. I don't have a clue what this is talking about. Sir, three, hold on. Six. Stick up in, sir. So mm -hmm. number one, you count that as one. One what? Trapezoid. Um, if, I, if I knock your system. Between, sir, oh, hold you on. Sir, um, is in the chopper side with um the, the space between? Yes, sir. So why are you telling me that I count one as a trapezoid? The trapezoid is between one and one point five. That's what Lotta just told you. So the first trapezoid is between one and one point five. The second trapezoid is between one point five and two. The third, two and two point five. Okay, sir. All right. And then the ordinals now would be at 1, at 1.5, at 2, at 2.5, at 3, at 3.5, and at 4. Hello? Yes, sir, we're here. Okay, no, it was us. wondering if Mackie was with us. Yes, yeah, 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 sir, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. All right, cool. Anybody can think out what is this 3 and this 4.25 and this 6 and this 8.25, 11, 14.25 and 18? I have no clue. Let's just read the question again. It says the sketch below represents the area under the curve for that function y equals x squared plus 2. Oh, so that means the curve right here. So then the curve is x squared plus 2 between 1 and 4. Okay, I get, get that of the boundaries of a plot of land purchased by ABC company. Good. So the boundaries of the plot of land by ABC company is one and four. Just like how people buy one lot and the lot is one to four um, Mountain View Avenue. That's all it is saying. So understand that. The length of the perpendicular offsets at equal intervals. Oh, but at equal intervals, that look like the trapezoids because we know that the trapezoids are supposed to be equidistant. That, that's the word sir used last night. True or false? True, sir. Mm -hmm. So we know said these are the trapezoids. From the straight line to the curve boundary are shown on the sketch. All right. The field manager of the company would like to know the area of the plot before using it. Calculate the area of the plot of land using the trapezoidal rule. Okay. How many trapezoids we have? Six. Six. Go ahead for me, please. And calculate V of X 
use your calculation of v of x to calculate the function at each point for me, please. You understand my instruction? No, sir. All right. So remember, what, what was V of X? How did we calculate V of X? Okay, let me not say V of X. How did we calculate the width of the trapezoid? What form we use to calculate the width of the trapezoid? B the minus A. B minus, B minus A over um, N, which is so upper minus lower. Upper minus lower yeah. over the trapezoid. And how many trapezoids we have? Six, sir. Six. Six. What is four minus one? Three. three. And three over six equals? Two. Really? Uh -huh. Wait, three uh -huh. over six is it? A uh half. -huh. Is equals to a half. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? I never say six uh -huh. over three. No. Uh -huh. so that's why I can't make, and that's why we yes, get calculated, Anna, sir. Sir? <laughs> yes, sir, I'm hearing you. Oh, I'm just making sure. Right. So, so six over so so three over six is going to be equal to a half. So the width of the trapezoid is a half. Did we see that in the in, in the diagram? Yes, sir. I see the head going up by a half. Uh -huh. Okay, good. So we know so, so we see that part. We know that that part is okay. So yesterday, after we found the width of the trapezoid, what we did was to go ahead now and look at the function. And we're going to write the function. And what's the function? Y equals f of f, y equals x, x, x squared plus two. Yeah. And we are going to work on the ordinals. So let us work on the ordinals next. If we're starting at one, the lowest, the lower bound, x equals one. So we're going to write down the ordinals one, then 1.5, two, 2.5, three, 3.5, four. We see all of that here on the x axis. Then what next we did, we went ahead and we used a function and we substituted all the ordinary ordinal points into the function. And then we get an answer outside of that. Go ahead for me, please. Substitute the ordinal function, the ordinal points rather, into the function and tell me the results you get to see if you see anything that looks like something happening. You understand that instruction now? <laughs> We'll need to find I'm going to wait first. All right. So I don't hear the answer. I was told that when I don't hear the answer, that means you understand it. So go ahead. I said in last. I didn't hear answered in last. No, well, go ahead, please. <laughs> So, sir, what is the function? Y squared equal, sorry, Y equal like, X squared plus two. Oh, Z equal to X squared plus two. And I know. X squared plus two, yes. Oh, oh, see it up there, sir. Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. sorry. Okay, sir, sorry. So the first, the first one is, the first one is the one.
Are we finished with the question? What are you recognizing anything? Yes, sir. What are um, you recognizing? Um, the 18 and the 14.25 and the 11 and all of that. Oh, so when you substitute one in the area three? Yes, sir. I want to substitute 1.5 in the function get 4.25? Yes, sir. yes, sir. And six and all of them numbers here? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, so that, are that the number you mean? Sorry, yes, I want to. No, yes. something wrong with my, my, my imagination and my, my calculation. So how the, do you find the ordinals? No, the 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 ordinals are the one the, the, one. That, the, the one which the one mm -hmm. the one which is the, the lower plus mm -hmm. the the um the width of the trapezoid. The, the width, yes, plus the width. Mm -hmm. I, I guess what is, I guess so what is two. what is so one plus three over two? One point five. Uh, that's 1.5. 1.5. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, but some I think they were saying something you said they get 4.25. You know, when they substitute the 1.5 into the function, 1.5 oh, squared. Minus 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 minus. Okay. All right. I want all of you to see what is it that's happening. So I'm gonna give you okay. two more minutes. Two more minutes. Okay. So the rest of you? you? No, okay, sir. The rest of you? Sir. Those, of, those of you are finished? It says, if the direct integration gives the exact answer as 27 square units, I want you to integrate this for me, the actual integration, and tell me what it is that you get. Okay, sir. Sir, just no, sir. Is a blind here, sir? So, sir, with this no, we work with decimals instead of the fractions. Uh, um, it doesn't matter really, you know. It it. Which one is easier? Um, which your calculator makes it easier for you working with the. Yes, that's the kind of. Yeah. Well, so it, it really doesn't matter here, so. Well, sir, you never say which um we're supposed to um well, we're gonna use calculator when we when we do the do them question here. The long one, them. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a calculator. Okay, because I was gonna write it. Oh my. Yeah, okay. You need a calculator, man. Finish your question for me, please. I mean, I, 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 I sorry. Can I, I see number two, please? Huh? Number two. No, hold on. Did you finish your question? Let's just because try because we are trying. You, you, you remember you, you remember you do the um. You, you have some tools that you have to work inside. You know, did you get an approximation? I sent you. I sent you. I sent you my oh, my response. I, I I apologize. I need to. I'm I've been look I've been looking the mobile, so but I sent you okay. but I sent you um, all right. Yeah, I see that. Okay, let me just talk about something in class now. Um yeah, very good class. Well, I see what it is that you sent me, and it seems correct. Um you know, let, 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 me, let me press pause on that one. There's something I need to talk to you guys about, but I'm gonna press pause until afterwards. Continue working, please. I'm right here, continue working. Sir, I'm still asking me last year, sir. Oh, sorry, sorry. You said you're blind. What are you blind about? Everything. Yeah, you know why? I don't know who you yesterday. You come to class and I talk to nobody yesterday. All the call me, I call up and you know, pay me no mind. Sir, me did their work. Sir, me did their work. <laughs> yeah, but you never, you never said that. Yeah, try if you know, make it look so obvious, sir. I could. Yeah, but I mean, you, you know. Last. You know, you know, learn nothing in class yesterday because you're very Sir, I'm telling you, I couldn't make the multitask yesterday. I had to be honest with you. Mm, I know that. So, yeah. But may, may I wait for your work to work so I can catch you again? All right, then, I'll soon come. I'm sorry, I got the 27 for both. You got 27 for the for the approximation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I got 
are coming to you, Joe. 27 flag courage. For the um try for the actual one, not 27. Yeah, for the actual one, 27 flat. Right, but what do we go for the approximation? 27. Flat? What's approximation? When I say flat, I mean 27.00 or 27 point something something. 27 for the actual flat. No, 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 no. I hear you. I hear you. But I'm saying, what did you get for the approximation for part one? Oh, 27.1 something. So it's okay. 27. All right, then, good. No, no. Well, we're, we're going to come there. You're, you're, you're on the right track. Very good. I'll give the other guys two more minutes. It's now 5.58. <laughs> 758 At 8 o'clock, I stop you. Sure. Yes, Joe. So I got my interview for the MTP job, but I kind of stuck with the approximation. You stuck with the approximation? Yeah. Okay, you have two minutes to pull up. All right. All right, let's go. Okay, so we had six trapezoids. It means that my ordinals will be seven. Let us count the ordinals. I have x of 0 is the first ordinal, x of 1, the second ordinal, x2, the third, x3, the fourth, x4, four, the fifth, x5, the sixth, and x6, six, the seventh. So I have my seven ordinals. Count the plus signs between and tell me how many, how many plus signs you get, please. Six, sir. Good. So the plus signs could be used as my trapezoids. And remember, I'm going to have one more for my ordinal. So the trapezoids are in between. So between 1 and 1 1.5 is one trapezoid, so forth and so on. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 trapezoids. So, sir, so based on this now, the, the diagram, that means that we would have the ordinals. So we wouldn't have to calculate the ordinals. Yeah, but guess what? Nobody knew what these values were. No, no, we didn't. No, I'm just asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. If if we were sure that the three and the four point two five and the six and the eight point two five corresponded no, to the class, sir. the class, not you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So none of none of you <laughs> knew what that yes. meant. Good. So um, so this is why we had to work it up because we learned it up. Okay, you know, um, there are two things that are lingering in my mind. And if one of the things that I want to learn about me, if something is, if something is bothering me, it have to come out. Um, so I'm going to say two things. Thing number one, it's very evident in class. So Bijan always comes to class and he always participates in class. Yesterday, I was very observant and recognized something different. He comes, he, he turns up tonight, sir, I'm blind. What's the point I'm making? 
And I've always made a point. When you don't participate, when you don't actively take part, you are going to be missing something. That's number one. And I'm saying to those of you who are always here, but are always muted, you can have the most excellent teacher in this world. If you don't put the work in, you're still going to fail. And sometimes we have an understanding that we believe, but when we verbalize it, we recognize, say, and on that. So I'm saying to you, participate. Number two, and this is the important one, not that the first one wasn't important. Sometimes you get the question, you see the drawing like what we're seeing right here, and we say, but Mr. Shan never teach you nothing like this before. And then after that, you reach the question and it say in bold, trapezoidal rule. It's a blow up, but you may teach a trapezoidal rule. But we don't see no integration sign, and we don't see nothing with no upper limit and lower limit. And you go back to the question and say, the sketch below the area under the curve, but hold on there. Area under the curve are integration. Oh, that means say the x squared plus two is a function. And you're integrating with respect to x. How you know that, sir? Because see them tell you say x equal one for the lower limit and x equals four for the upper limit. Oh, they know. But they measure the point of something with the one and the 1.5 and them six and 8.25 and 11. I have no clue. But guess what? Me know how to teach a topic. Me go try it. So I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm remember we're not doing the actual integration. But the first thing we need to find is to see how many trapezoids. But sir, the question never tell you how many trapezoids, but hold on. It gives you a diagram. So we're going to look and count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know that N represents my trapezoids and N is going to be equal to six. So me and you six as N. Put on there, one, 1 1.252, 2.253, 3.5, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. Oh, but sir, always say the number of ordinals is one greater than the number of trapezoids. Hold up again. Sir, they say you hold up your finger, you hold up your hand them. And you have five finger. And when you count the space between each finger, you're supposed to have four. One, two, three, four. Yes, I saw. That means that those are the trapezoids. All right. N is six. N is six. So what you're going to do is it's upper four minus the lower one over six. And four minus one is three. Three over six is a half. This tells me the width of my trapezoid. My trapezoid is going to be one half. Don't worry about this piece of here yet. Then we know now that V of X is going to be divided by two. So this one half is going to be divided by two. Watch it. V over X is over two. One half divided by two is going to be one quarter. Because when you divide in two fractions, remember this two is over one. So it's going to be one half multiplied. Instead of two over one, we can have one over two because we have to invert the bottom one. So it's one over two multiplied by one over two. See it right here, so? So we're getting it a half, a quarter. One times one is one, two times two is four. So we have the V of X over two to be a quarter, and we know V of X is a half. Then now we know the function to be X squared plus two. What we need to do now is to write down the ordinals. Because we know if the width is a half and the lowest one is one, it means we're going to write the one first, and then we can add the ordinal to, to get one and a half, which is three over two. Then we add one a half more to that, we're going to get two. We'll add a half more to get, we get five over two. Sir, five over two is not two and a half, check it. Five over two is 2.5. Is, 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 is 2. Yes, and then we'll add half to that, we get three. And we'll add mm -hmm. half to that, we're going to get seven over two, but seven over two is the same as 3.5. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I check and I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But hold on then now, sir. But when we look up on the diagram, we recognize say, with the six trapezoids, we are, we are able to calculate them ordinals here. 
Hold on to know. And this other curve, x squared plus 2, me get the ordinals, me get the number of trapezoids, me must find out whether I'm 3 and the 4.25 equal to. I go on with the work the question, sir. So now, we're not doing an actual integration. I'm going to substitute each of these ordinals into my function. Watch me. X squared plus 1, anywhere in the function I see 1, I mean x, I'm going to put 1. 1 squared is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Hold on there. 3 to blow. <laughs> so when we try the next one, better get 4.25. Because if we don't get 4.25 right about now, we last with the question. So let us go. 3 over 2, right or so. 3 over 2 squared plus 2, 17 over 4. 4, 4, 16. 4.25. Yes, you catch it now. And then no, you try the two and you get the six and you substitute that. You say, yeah, ma'am, we'll go to the question. You have all of that. So Bijan, what it is that we're doing, we're substituting the ordinals into the original function given. And you'll recognize that we're going to get all those values. So if you try the four, 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 16, 16 plus two is 18. See the 18 right here. We try the three. Three squares are nine, nine plus three is 11. And we get our values there. <laughs> oh, we must say, oh, we must say another chat, no. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I think they all work, see me. Yeah, they work tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to write on this. Uh, Send me a group later now, please. <laughs> yeah. All right. So when we, have, when we have that now, remember um, now. Um, you know what? I, know? I I remember you said something about we don't pass the, the, the upper limit. Ah. The two one the upper limit. Yes. Yes. That's yes, why I yes, yes. yes. Because remember, thank you for, 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 for reminding me of that point. So if you look at it here, you see the lower limit at one and the upper limit at four. So we know where to start. We know our start point. We know our end point. Sure. Yes, please. So I don't get it. From my last, from the, the recall, the interval, I don't, I don't understand how you get the, the three over two and the five over two. I don't understand that. You asked me that question yesterday. And when you asked me that question, Lotta came in and said, yes, sir. Oh, sir me, me, uh, no, no, you asked me the question. You asked me the question first. Mm -hmm. And then I explained something else. And then he asked me the question after. And then you came in and said, Yeah, man, sir, me remember the same question I asked you, know, sir. You remember that? Um, sir, speaking and speaking on this, sir. No, hold on, Crosswell. Hold on, Crosswell. Lotta, you remember when he when you asked first, and then I was explaining something, I think, for Crosswell, and then he came in and asked a very question, and he said, yes, sir, that was a question that I was asking. You remember that? Yes, sir, I'm Mr. Mr. Yes. All right, yeah. so, so, so is it that we're supposed to put the ordinal um, in, the, in the function, right? Let me, tell, let me explain, Mikey, because we get it. So we start with the lower limit first, whatever the lower limit is, we start with that. Then we add it to the, the width, which is a half. Or anything you get when you when you do your VX. Whatever answer you get, you'll add it to the lower limit. And then you get the when you get the answer for that, then you add the answer again to the width. Sorry? And it continues like that until you reach to the, the number of the upper limit or nearest to the number to the upper limit. So you don't pass the upper limit. You understand now, Mikey? We could have worked it using this small, sir. Uh, that might just like ask, you know, could you use the 1.5? You guys are not listening in class. You can use what you want. Remember, ask if we can do sir, something. You got or... to ask me a question earlier in class and I answered and I said yes. Only now listen to the teacher then. Oh, it looks like I got a touch. I got a touch on me, officer, because me was yeah, a man. point. So you would get 1.5 here. The same answer for four. Trust me. And then you get 2.5 and then you get 3.5. Yeah, man. That's the same answer. In the same answer, Papa. So you add half to all I remember now? Yes, Pops. Starting right. with the lower limit. So the, lower limit is, the lower limit is going to be the first value. The first ordinal mm -hmm. is the lower limit. 
One. One. Mm. And then the second ordinal is going to be one plus the width. And that answer plus the width, that answer plus the width, the answer plus the width, the answer plus the width. So each time you're adding the width to the previous answer until you get to the upper limit. Why are we doing that? Because it's supposed to be equidistant. It's supposed to be equidistant. All right, one. Oops. Mackie. Yes, sir. You see it now? Yes, sir, let me get you. All right. So we're, learn we're learning two things um, from these two things now. So your teacher remembers who asks questions in class because I listen intently to what is happening. Sometimes I go silent because I'm listening because I want to hear what you're thinking so I can understand if you understand. What I find out now based on the questions that are being asked is that you're not listening to each other. This is how we're learning a community. You, somebody's asking a question, pause, listen to the question, listen to my response because it may clear up something in your headspace. All right? So going forward, that's what I want you to do for me. So, yes, you could use 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4. Same difference. It's just that I like working in fractions because you get your actual answer. Now, um, let me just... Let me just pause and say something here. So Crosswell was coming in to say, but sir, you always said we're supposed to work in, a, in, 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 in the fractions. And he's correct. But the only reason I gave you to go ahead of using a decimal is because this is a terminating. When you find the decimal to, to, to one over two, it's a terminating decimal. What do you mean by terminating, sir? 1.5. You follow me? If the answer had been one over three, where you have those recurring decimals, you couldn't use 0.3. Because if you use 0.3, you're going to throw off your calculations. Do you understand what I'm saying? OK. I'll wait until sir, I understand. Hold on, sir. Hold on. Go up again, sir, with that 1.3. Yes, sir. One, once more. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is, when Lotto asks a question, sir, am I? Am I allowed to use a 1.5? And I said, yes. But sir, you have the, 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 the 3 over 2. Yes, man. 1.5 is the same thing as 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is the same thing as 1.5. The only reason that that answer is yes is because the, one point, the point 0.5 is a terminating decimal. What do you mean by terminating? It ends. So 1 quarter is a terminating decimal because it is 0.25. One ninth is not a terminating decimal because it is 0.1111111. Those, those are what we call recurring decimals. Recurring decimals. Right? So if you put in 1.3, sorry, if you put in 0.3, you're going to miss out some of the decimal points because it is not terminating. So when you use 0.5, you're using all of the values of the decimal place because the terminating decimal. If you had a recurring decimal, as in the case of one divided by three, which is 0 0.3333, or even two over three, which is 2.6666666666. If you call it 2.67, you're, you're, you're again approximating the approximation. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And when you approximate the approximation, your answer is going to be less. So what I'm saying to you is, if you always get into the habit of using a fractional form, you are good to go. All of this long explanation I'm giving, now they have no effect on you because you're always using a fractional form, which is why um, I'm using a fractional form so that you can be consistent with what it is that you're doing. Not all the time you're going to get a a terminating decimal like the one over two sometimes you may get one over three i think yesterday we got one over three if i'm not mistaken as the the stuff i, I can't remember but sometimes you get um a recurring decimal um as your v of x um as as as, as the width of the trapezoid the the, the, the the trapezoid and if you roll that off to say 0.33 it is not the actual value that you're using. So you're approximating the approximation. So your answer is going to be off somewhat. So point I'm making is use a fraction. 
when something terminates, like 1.75, and I have nothing more decimal place after that, yeah, you can use a decimal. But once it is that you have 272727227, the recurring decimals, try use a fractional form. All right. So let's go. Ouch. So let's go. So now, remember, I would have had my V of X over two here, which is what I calculated to give me one half, one quarter. So we have my, my quarter here. Now I have my the values of my ordinals here. Remember, the first and the last are not affected by the two. Do you agree with that? Agree, sir. Tell me why the first and the last not affected by the two, please. Because the first and the last. Wait, so they're not, um, they're not, um, they're not the interval, sir. No, that's not it. They yeah, they're, they're they don't, don't have a trapezoid. They're, they're not what? They don't have a trapezoid, sir. Mm -mm. They're only they touching. Limit to work with, sir. They're only touching. The upper they're not touching, one. sir. The N1 only is not touching. One and they, um, the and N1 they, is touching. Only touch one, one side. One side. They're touching one side. The N1 is touching the the one side of the trapezoid. Mm -hmm. So the end one is touching one side of the trapezoid. So that's why that's only three. But the one beside the end one, every other, every other trapezoid is touching two sides. So it's two of these that we have. 217 over four, 26, 233 over four, 211, 257 over four. But because the 18 is touching only one side, see? The 18 are just decided to touch. I have nothing else over here, so. The three only a touch right here, so I have nothing else over here. So this 4.25 a touch right here, so and it a touch right here, so the six touch the left and the right. This touch the left and the right. This one touch the left and the right. So it's the end ones only touch this one only touching the right. This one only touching the left. So it's only one side those are touching, which is why it's just one of each for those. When you put all of this in a calculator. You're supposed to get 217 over 2. And when you multiply that by a quarter or divide that by a 4, you're supposed to get 217 over 8. And my answer will be 27.125. Now, this is my actual answer because I'm using a terminating decimal. So I'm, I'm not going to round it off and call it 27 because you're actually doing the, did it say the word? No. But whenever you use the, trape the trapezoidal rule, you're actually approximating. So you can't, if you round off, if you round off, you're approximating the approximate, approximation. So you can't round off, just give me the full answer. So 27.125 would be the actual approximation. Let me pause here. Um, I'm hearing a few persons saying that they got the 27.125. Anybody got something different when they did their calculation? Yes, sir, I got something different. Um, I got... Um, oh, hold on, Coswell. Hold on, hold on, Coswell. What you got, Mikey? I got a 31.86. 31.86. I think I need to review it. Did you get these... The values of the ordinals, the, the three, the 17 and a half, the six, and all of those? I, did, I didn't do it that way, sir. What you did? I didn't. I, didn't, I used a point there. All right, so so you, got, the, you, got, you got three? Yes, sir. I got three and I got the 18. All right, but hold on. Did you get 4.25? 4. 4. All right, so for the 1.5, I got 4.5. Can't be 4.5. 4416, it's supposed to be 4.25. Check it again. Okay, sir. Sir, I got Plus, one. Let me, hear let me hear your question in the meantime while he checks it. Well, um, if I can go ahead, I got um 108.5. That's what I got first, but I don't see that I calculated it incorrectly. But when okay. I divided it by four, I got um, the 
Seven point one two five. All right. Yes, but when it, when it, when it, when it, when it, when you did the calculation the second time, now what are you getting? Four point one four point two five. Four point two five. Yeah. No. Wait. Oh, yes, I'm sir. I did it. I did it wrong. It's supposed to be four point two five. Very good. All right. So now that you get that calculation, did you get six for the for when of f of two? Yes, sir. I got six. Did you get um four eight thirty two? Did you get eight point two five? Where I went wrong, I get 8.5. I think I'm going to review. I'm going to check what the answer is. Yeah, I want to check them back. Knowing I got 11. I got 11 and I got the 18. Yeah, because those are whole numbers. But I want to check the 8.25. And I want you to check the 50. I want you to check the 1 and um 14.25. Yeah, I got the 14.25. So um the only one Six. I got wrong is the... Is it 8.5? The 8.5 and the 4.5. So I'm gonna just check them back. Put that in put that in a calculator for me. And then um and then we do that. I want to make sure that you, you, you leave class tonight with, with, with the understanding of that because I'm gonna give you one to do in class. So please to fix those. I want all of you to fix those for me, please. Are you all understanding? Uh, sir, just one question. Um, if you can scroll okay, up a so bit. I'll come in to you. Let me hear Taj first and then I'll come in with the others. Go ahead, Taj. Yes, sir. If you can scroll up a bit, not gets you one thing. Um, for the let me see here. The VX divided by two equal what two over two. I'm not understanding how we got the one over four right there. So all right, do me a favor, Taj. Yes, Put sir. on your factory to one divided by two. One divided by two. Mm -hmm. And then press divided by two again until when you get 0 0.25. And what is 0 0.25 as a fraction? Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, 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 so what I do, um, and if you know, you notice, you notice in all of the things that I project, I always try to show the full workout of stuff because I don't want to, um, you know, it's math and I don't want to shortchange anything. So, what I'm saying to you is, one divided by two divided by two mm -hmm. is really one divided by two divided by two over one. This two here, this whole number two under here is actually two over one. There's a rule that says when I'm dividing two fractions, I'm going to invert the denominator and multiply the numerator by it. So the one over two is this one over two here. And this other one half is when I invert the two over the imaginary one, I'm going to get one over two, which is this one. And one times one is one, and two times two is four. So that's what I've been, that's what I evaluate the, the 0.25 or the one fourth. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. No problem. We can pause just one second. And, and I see the, the, your answer again 27.125, which is 27.3, if we can do it like that. Oh, okay. yeah. Very good. Very good, Lotto. Yes, Bijan, let me hear your question. Sir, up back up, up, up at the top there. Um, right, right, so mm. all right, so we all right, so me understand. See so the function, the limit of the Chapeze. one and four, right? So yeah. the, the trapeze are and the they said the plus them and the amount are what trapeze them, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. so the yeah. vx equal four minus one, and so we had to use the limit that so the upper limit minus the lower. Yeah. limit. Mm -hmm. But the amount of trapezium we have, so mm -hmm. six. All right. So that now we get a half. Mm -hmm. Then we move down to the VX. How we get that over two part there? Because the formula, look at look at the very first thing on the solution. You see what the formula says? VX over two. Oh, right, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we had to, in order to calculate Vx, Vx is really the, 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 the width. Vx gives us the width of the okay, trapezoid. Okay. And we need to know the width of the trapezoid in order to calculate the, 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 um, the ordinance. Okay. Let me know when I'll, I'll, I'll get that tool. All right, sir. Yeah, man. And there's a part here that All right. Crossfield, I think you wanted to come in, son. What's it? No, no, it's all right, sir. Okay, is there any other question in the class?
Yeah. No, sir. I'm just alright. This don't feel understand it fully. I just that. Uh, a problem. Remember, tonight is not a night for me to call out people. You're supposed to be responsible, you know, to do this stuff. It's not an online exam. It's a face-to-face -face exam. All right? So you have to make sure that you have your full some understanding. All right? And incidentally, what I did last night with you in terms of explaining the stuff, um, based on the... the, the how I went through it with you last night, I have never done it with a group like that before. So you guys would have gotten um, the whole topic in that one explanation that I did. It's just that I was in class and I said, you know what, let me just try a different way of explaining this stuff. That's why I asked you to put out the palm of your hand. So pictorially, you could see what was happening because students in the past were having a difficulty understanding the trapezoids versus the ordinals. And I say, you know what? Let us use a hand. So the idea just came to me and I said, let us do that. And it worked beautifully. So if you listen to all that I was saying to you yesterday, it will come into play where it is that you can have that fulsome understanding to the topic. It really isn't difficult. Really isn't difficult. But you just have to be careful. Um, Sometimes they ask, sometimes they give you the so number. I, just, I don't know if anybody is writing right here, but if not, um, mm, you know, try right. What? Um, what? Right, what? But all right, the, I just want to write the, the, the questions. You want me to go up? Yes, sir, where the questions are. So I can just finish writing. Just right. Right there. Right there is good. Yeah. So, um, so I'm just going to ask that you just, the, the topic finish, you know, is just first to do a few examples. And uh, we have half an hour left. I'm going to, I'm going to, what am I going to do? Yeah, so it's there's a second part to the question. It says, if the direct integration gives the exact answer as 27. No, um, it didn't ask you to find the actual integration, you know. But if, just like the first part, if you never know what to do, and the people them talk about direct integration, and you say, you're the plan. I don't know, you know, I'm going to try the direct integration. And you do the direct integration, and you get your 27, you know, so they put them answer right. What they're saying, find the percentage error in your answer to one above. Oh, I see, no, sir. I get it. So we did the integration by the approximation method using the trapezoidal rule. And incidentally, there are other rules, right? The trapezoidal rule. And when I use the approximation with the trapezoidal rule, I'm getting 27.125. But the question is saying to me now that the actual integration is 27. They want me to calculate the percentage error in using the question. Now, let me just tell it straight up. The percentage error part is going to be a little bit, it's going to take a bit out of me to do the explanation. It's going to take a bit out of, I'm going to do two explanations. I'm going to do two calculations to show you where one of them is slightly off and one is more accurate. All right, one is more accurate, one is slightly off. Um, so let me, let me know when I can go. Okay, so I I'm can finished. go. All right, so let's, let, us, let us see if we can move into that now. So looking at the error, looking at the error, one will say, okay, sir, seeing that 27 is the, is, the, is, the, is the actual calculation, in order to calculate the error, all I'm going to be doing is to say the the approximation minus the, 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 the actual over the actual. So let's say 27.125 minus 27 um, times 100 because I'm calculating the percentage. So I'm going to have 0 0.125 over 27 times 100% to give me 0.46%. So 0.46% is the, is the error in our calculation. 
is the percentage. Huh? I said nothing, sir. What? 0.46% is, is going to be the error in the calculation. So if you wanted to report it, um, the, 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 it you just report it, say them in a plan. The calculated error will be 0.46%. 0.46%. Let me ask sir. you. Go ahead, son. Sir, that 27, the, the minus 27. At the same um, final value, you just take out the decimal part? Yeah. No. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah, man, that 27 up in the numerator you talk? Yes, sir. Yeah, man, it is, the, it is the approximation minus the actual over the actual. Oh. Oh, because I was gonna cause 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 I was gonna say that yeah, um it was in reference to the second part of the question. Okay. Tell me some mark. Um oh. I'm trying to I'm trying to follow what it is that you're saying and I ask you to tell me nothing. What I no, I no, I said that um when when you when you were gonna say what you what you said a while ago, um I was gonna say that in reference to the second question, you said they gave you a stated value, and I was and I was gonna say that you did basically you you would just use that in the calculation um of the percentage error to, to get your to get the answer. That's that's how I said that's how I yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man, and you'll be correct. So I'm just gonna find the difference, and the difference is going to be 0 0.125. And it's 0 0.125 now is going to be, be, be divided by the 27 times hundred percent which will give me the 0.46%. 0 .46%. So my percentage error is 0.46%. Now, I want, I want the rest, I want all of you to think of what it is that I'm saying because I am putting this into the real world. This is real world um, calculation. So how did you get 0 0.46? Clear for me, please. Clear your calculator. Make sure your calculator is So clear. I get 4.6. Don't hold my numbers. It times it by 100. Wait, no? Wait. No, man. I, I did it in my calculator. 0 0.12 over 27 times 100%. No, 0 0.125. Yeah, man. 0 0.125, sir. That's it. 0 0.125 over 27 times 100%. Make mm -hmm. sure you get about the 0. Point four six two nine some 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 that's what you got yeah i get that no, no, I'm to my calculator uh, i am getting that my calculator give me 4.66 some work per number times 10 to the negative three no yes. 10 to the negative three there's more free spaces in front of the point behind the point so one two three Oh my God, may I have zero point zero 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 something to stay around? You get it, that one? No, my dear love. All right, so all right, yo, you do. Clear the calculator. Mm -hmm. Um, type in twenty seven point one two seven minus the twenty seven. Mm -hmm. Equal it, then you divide it by the twenty seven. All right, let me try that. Um, oh, you may have some near now. Let me, let me try it. You may have the calculator. It's by 100. You forgot to multiply by 100. Minus 27. Mm -hmm. Equal. And then divide it by the 27. 27. And then times it by 100. Equal. I'll get by the same thing because the answer start Give me three times. 100. I remember percent sign. No, because what it is that we need to find. Um, oh, so I don't need the percent sign then. No, just put a hundred. Oh, oh, I get it now, sir. So no yeah. percent sign. Uh, because the percent, you notice, you notice the answer of a percent out there? Yes, sir. That's it, that's it. Okay. Then I'll know, no. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask this question, but I will ask it. 
Um, and it's just, it, it's, it, it just may be some gaps in our teaching because I guess if you may ask some teachers, they don't know themselves. But I remember years ago when I just started teaching, I was challenged by some group of students and I had to get down to the explanation so I can show them what happened. You see, when you multiply by 100%, what percent means? Repeat that, Miss. Repeat that, sir. What, what percent means? <laughs> Say it again, Bijan. About <laughs> out of 100. Yeah, the percent means out of 100. So when I write 100%, it means that I'm writing 100 divided by 100. 100. And what is 100 divided by 100? One. 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 And what is one known as? Let me try the percentage sign alone. You're not hearing me. Joe, you always ask a question and we now hear you. Hear me answer every single thing we ask. Well, what you need to do before you start answering is to unmute yourself. <laughs> Sir, I'm waiting. What's it? We weren't hearing you. Sir, one is a whole. And one is a whole, but one is known as the what kind of identity? Say so the multiplicative. The multiplicative, I knew that. Yeah, I knew so, that. When you, so when you multiply one by any number, you get back any number. So when I multiply back by 100%, I'm really not changing anything because I'm multiplying by the multiplicative identity. How, sir, what the percentage means out of 100. And when I have 100 out of 100, it means that I have 100 sitting up top, another 100, which is one, because 100 divided by 100 is one. So if you multiply by 100 and then put percent, you're actually finding the percent now of 0.46%, which is when it gives you 0 0.0046. So you're doing a question, you're doing a question two times. All right. So that's what is that. All right. Now, so that is the easier of the two methods. Where it is that you what is asked for again? Let me just make sure that I'm find a percentage error. All right. Now, this method is the more exact one in finding the error of using the trapezoidal rule. Um, I, want you to, I want you to give me some undivided. I don't want you to blink. I don't want you to... to um, I don't want you to, to, to take your eyes from the screen. I want your undivided attention here. So I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using a formulation that says the error of the trapezium. So E is for error. T-R-A-P is for trapezium because there are different error formulas. There are different error formulas. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Another, another, hold on. Another, another approximation is Simpsons, right? But I am Simpson is not on your on your syllabus. It's not until I okay. get the acronym. But guess what? V of X is the same way as Simpson. I mean, as from so officer. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to change up. It's 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 not there, but it's, it doesn't kill you to understand to see what is happening though, but it, it's not there. Um and look here. That's not what I want to show you. Oh, come on. You see here now, the error that I'm calculating, this error, I put a subscript as S, the error for Simpsons. So I know exactly which one of them I'm using because this is a formulation for the, for the Simpsons error. See here, the Simpsons one is a different one from my, from my trapezoidal. So I want you to work with the trapezoidal right here. 
So I want you to look at this here now. So please give me your un give me your undivided so that I can explain this fully to get it out of the way. Watch me. So the formula says the absolute value, the absolute error value for my trapezoidal rule is going to be K times my B minus A, my lower limit minus my upper limit, all cube over 12 times N square. Over 12 times N square. Sorry, but them get that formula from I that demand them give you. We can derive it, but the derivation of it is not important now. It's for you to understand its application. As the topic says, application to integration. All right? So it's going to be K times B minus A raised to the third power all over 12 N square. Such that the second derivative of, of the function, the absolute value of the second derivative of the function must be less than or equals to K. What was the function? The function was x squared plus two. Plus two. All right. Watch me. You know that b minus a is going to be three. Sir, how you get that again? Four minus one is three. That's a three. What is n, sir? The number of trapezoids. Oh, trapezoids. Right. So we have six of them. K, we get k, k to be equal to k will two. be part of the um the formula. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we find the first derivative of it, we're going to get um, 2x. So k is which part of its formula? Of this formula, right up here. k times b minus a all cube over so 12. So we get the 2. Sir, is it always 2? Huh? Oh, you get which 2? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, that's, what I'm sure, that's, what I was, that's what I was working on. We didn't ask me the question, Lotto. Okay. So I find the first derivative. Remember, no, k is going to be the second derivative. So the first, when I differentiate, when I find f dash of x, I'm going to get 2x. See it right here, so? Mm -hmm. But I need a second derivative. So when I find the second derivative, no. When I differentiate 2x, I'm going to get 2. k is a second derivative. OK, I see. Okay, okay. Is the second derivative, right? So when I differentiate, when I differentiate f of x two times, the first derivative of f of x is going to be two x, don't it? Yes, sir. And when I differentiate it one more time, I get what? Two. Yeah. So k is two. Okay. So now, now we have the value of k. We know what b minus a is, and we already know what n is. So we're substituting. So the error is going to be 2, because that's the value of k. b minus a is 3, so it's going to be 3 cubes. We know 12 is a constant, so we write it back. And we know we have 6 trapezoids, so it's going to be 6 square. 3 cubes is 27, so it's going to be 2 times 27, which gives me 54. And 6 square is going to be 36. And that 36 multiplied by 12 is 432. And when I divide... 54 by 432, I'm going to get one eighth. I'm going to find and that. Eight times is 12.5%. Is yeah. Which is a more accurate way of calculating the error. The more accurate way of calculating the error. If they give it a question to calculate error, this is what I want you to use. This is a calculation to calculate the error of the trapezoidal, using the trapezoidal rule. When I hear silence this way and I know exactly what it is. <laughs> I teach you. To, I teach you. To yeah, process, sir, process, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Then process it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. For process first. What is the madness here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. 
when you oh yes so i was i was telling you something while i while i try process it let me help you to to, to to try and process it so work with me here you ever you ever buy a corner piece that is supposed to be at a 45 degree angle and you try to put that corner piece into your house and you recognize that the house is not square or better example you're tiling over your house your room your living room your bathroom and the tile man come and say to you bossy you know say the place is not square up because look at so and when you look on the something you recognize say it really was it was really off it has ever happened to anybody yet no sir i've never tiled a house or tiled okay so if you never tell a house have you ever bought a um If you ever, you know, sometimes they have those 45, all right. Exercise for you to do for me. For those of you who have a ge geometry set, there are two triangles inside of those geometry sets. One is called a 45 and the other is called a 60, 30. You can use any of the two. And you're going to find a corner into your house. And you're going to put the tip of that 45 or the 60, 30. And if one side of the wall sits exactly on one side of the leg of that triangle, and the other side of the wall sits exactly on the other leg of that triangle, then you know so your house will square up. Well square, sir. <laughs> yeah. If when you do it, and piece of something I hang off, you know, so the house never square up. The builder man makes some error off of something. And trust me, I have it at home. I, I mean, me not sure if I tell you. I have it at home. I, I, I have a piece when I put it. I said, but hold on. This thing now fits. And because I know little mathematics, it's a flow. It's something not square. And especially if you're putting up a shelf. A corner piece shelf to hang your, you know, your toddy trees or whatever it is. He said, but hold on this so the place not square up, man. Ah, something that happened to me recently. He said, if you're putting on a, like, you, 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 you're changing a countertop and the man them come, come measure up the countertop and then the rest of the countertop on the something, see the man them going to make, but them call them something again, splint. Because them have to put the spin on that to raise the countertop because them say, you know, so the house don't square up. Me say, so I was told. Sir, what is all of what it is that you're explaining and why are you telling us all of that? Because whenever you're doing those calculations, you have to calculate the percentage error. Can I live in a house that is not fully square if my percentage error in building is 12.5%? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Can you drive a car if the car is not at its it's 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 not working at its optimal if it is 12.5% sick? Yeah, come ashore, say those of you who drive, you don't all have four new brand new tires on the car. Yeah, you may want to drive on the car, want to service, but you say, here the plan. I mean, I'll service this car, and I'm going to month ago be a fuss and come back. You understand? And some of us jump into somebody's vehicle and say, um, you can't drop me somewhere. They say, no, see the key here, go on yourself. And you say, all right, me soon come. And you drive this person's car, and you don't know if the person ever serviced the car in, in one since them have the car. But you drive the car gone. You know what I thought about? Recently, could be yesterday, I had I had a moment where I said to myself, but you know, so me an idiot, me a big, big idiot, you know. Because me go take bus and plane and train and go on cruise and don't know if the pilot can fly and if the bus driver have a license and if the man who says he's a captain on the ship is really a captain, 
but I just put my faith in them. Anybody ever thought about that yet? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Real, real talk. What's the point? Can I? Can you fly in a plane that is... <laughs> Well, I shouldn't ask that question because if I know that there's a 25, a 12.5 percent um, chance of something happening, I ain't taking it. But I have been on a flight before where um, they are saying that um, something is wrong. They have mechanical problems and they are going to fix it, and um, so we can we need to deplane so they can fix the mechanical problem. I said no, change that plane. Me not me not traveling on that. You can't fix it so quick. No, change a plane. Right? They make clips of them, change a the plane, I don't know. But you just go on there in faith. So I'm saying to you, your computer, your computer don't run optimally at 100%. You have a percentage error. So this is how we calculate our percentage error in everything that we do. So the area of this plot of land that we've calculated, what we are saying to you is that Using the approximation, there is a 12.5% error in our calculation. But is it okay if we use 12.5%? Absolutely. Absolutely. When they come to check the buttons of your house, um, it's supposed to be what it's supposed to be. But if it is off by one or two, then we can say, yeah, why don't we make a lid on a wall that cost you $500,000 to build for two centimeters? They no. would have to get some wrong with the wiring. Huh? They would have to get some wrong with the wiring. Yeah, but I mean, they, would, they wouldn't do that. Because I mean, you I can't can't but, um, They won't do it. They'll probably just yeah. ask you to change um, Yeah, so if it, so what I'm saying to you, Crosswell, is if, it, if, if the error is like at, at a 40%, or maybe even at 30%, then it becomes very obvious that, you know, hey, 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 hold on there. What is happening? What is happening? All right. I know what this means. So you have any more of them topic you're ready to teach? You don't say nothing yet. I'm going to ask your students. I'm going to send this off to you. I was preparing the document for you to send off, but you guys are saying that it's not so clear. Um, I was preparing this document to send off, the, but it's that it's not so clear. So it's going to take me a little more time to, to have that sorted out for you. But when you go silent, I know exactly what happens. So in that light, have a good rest of the night. We will talk. Thank you. Anthony. Thanks, sir. Same to you. We'll send no. this up. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. can... No problem, problem, sir. Yes, please. So apart from the document, sir, is it possible you can send a recording? Okay, I'm going back over it. Mikey, have you... Yes. Have you have you have you subscribed to the, the channel to see if the recordings are posted, sir? Yes, sir. I do. You have you have not, Michael. Yes, sir. You are always Michael, checking. You have, Michael, you have not because I've posted all the recordings and you did not even say thank you. So go and check them, Michael, please. I gotta I gotta check. And I forgive you. Thank you, sir.